In this tutorial, we will be discussing the kinetic molecular theory of liquids and solubility. When the attractive forces are strong enough so the kinetic energy can only partially overcome them, the material will change from a solid to a liquid. In a liquid, the particles are packed together with only limited translational or rotational freedom. If we look at these molecules here on the right hand side, you'll notice that the molecules are really close to one another. In a gas, the molecules have a lot of space between they're able to be more compact. Liquid, unlike gases, are almost incompressible. Liquid particles are close contact with one another, which limits their movement. They have fairly strong intermolecular forces. Polar substances have dipole moments and hydrogen bonding, whereas nonpolar substances have dispersion forces. Liquids have higher density than gases and are incompressible because the particles are in contact. If we look at the density equation, if we take the exact same amount of particles, which means the mass will be the same, and just examine the volume, the molecules of a gas are more spread out. Therefore, it's going to take up more volume. As this number on bottom gets bigger, we're dividing by a bigger number, making the density overall smaller. They have an indefinite shape because the limited translational freedom of the particles allows them to move around enough to get to the container walls. This is also why it's allowed to flow. However, they have a definite volume because the limit of their freedom it keeps them from escaping the rest of the particles. These intermolecular forces are, forces are holding them down. The stronger the attractions between the atoms, so we're referring to the intermolecular attractions here between the atoms and molecules, the more energy it will take to separate them. Boiling a liquid requires addition of enough energy to overcome all the intermolecular attractions between the particles. The bonds that make up the molecule, the intramolecular forces, do not actually break. So if we look at water, these bonds here do not break. The oxygen hydrogen bonds do not break. What's breaking is the attraction between the molecules. So if we look at this pot of boiling water, what this actually is, is water vapor. So these molecules here have spread out enough that they're able to form a gas. And then that gas, because it's less dense, ends up rising to the top. Notice that the molecules are much further apart than when they were in a liquid state. The higher the boiling point of the liquid, the stronger these intermolecular forces are. So in other words, if the molecules, if the intermolecular attraction is really strong, it's going to take a lot of energy to separate them, which is making it have a higher boiling point. So let's relate this over to solubility. Solubility depends in part on the attractive forces of the solute and the solvent molecules. Similar polarities dissolve in one another. In other words, like dissolves like. Miscible liquids will always dissolve in each other. For instance, polar substances will always dissolve in polar solvents. An example is if they have a hydrophilic group. Hydro, meaning water, philic, means loving. So these are items that love water. They have polar bonds. They have an electronegative side and an electropositive side. Here are some examples. OH, the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen, so you're going to have a flow of the electrons towards the oxygen. CHO, that's a double bonded oxygen with a hydrogen. Carbon with a double bonded oxygen. We have another carbon double bonded oxygen. This is a carboxylic acid, COOH. Because of these oxygens being more electronegative, the electrons are going to drift towards them. NH2, once again, nitrogen is more electronegative. And chlorine is an electronegative atom. Nonpolar molecules dissolve in nonpolar substances. Their compounds have hydrophobic groups. Hydro, once again, meaning water, 
Phobic is to be scared of it. It's the fear of water. So examples of these are hydrocarbons. Carbon hydrogen and carbon carbon bonded together. Molecules with hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts, in other words they have both parts, are a little bit more complicated. The solubility in polar substances becomes a competition between the attraction of the polar groups for the other polar groups and the attraction of the nonpolar groups for their nonpolar groups. Immiscible, however, are liquids that have nothing in common with each other. For instance, polar compounds mixed with nonpolar compounds, they won't they will not combine, such as oil and water. Here's another example of pentane and water. Pentane is nonpolar because it's just carbon and hydrogen. There's no oxygen in here to pull away the electrons. Whereas water is polar. They do not have anything to interact with or attract to each other. Therefore, they do not mix or are not soluble with each other. And that's an overview of solubility in the kinetic molecular theory with in substances that are liquids.